back under the roof here in Toronto. It is a balmy 53 degrees and cloudy in Buffalo where this game would have been played. 68 degrees, of course, outside here. It's rainy and 41 degrees, so obviously no elements here. For the Seahawks, a strange year. Five of their eight wins have come from those teams with a combined record of 41 and 24. Five losses to teams who have losing records. Of course, their problem, they haven't been able to win on the road as much. They're two and five on the road. And Pete Carroll, who began his NFL coaching career back in 1984 with the Buffalo Bills. And Dick, for the era... For, for the Buffalo Bills, it's been a disappointing season. You see the tight games, they haven't been able to get over the hump. Four of their last five losses by six points or less. It happens in the fourth quarter. They don't play well. They get outscored, and you see Fred Jackson out for the season. It may be a good thing for this team, and C.J. Spiller will finally get the carries he's due. Chan Gailey's third season, and he's lost twice as much as he's won. And back deep is Leon Washington who has returned kickoffs for eight touchdowns in his career, including a 98-yard this year. Ryan Lindell kicking it off, and we're underway here in Toronto, and it's Washington who will return it from a yard in the end zone. With good speed, and Washington carries it out beyond the 20-yard line, close to the 25, and the Seahawks will go to work. Buffalo, by the way, won the toss and deferred, so Seattle gets the ball first, which means we see Russell Wilson, the rookie, and I said diminutive at 5'11", a lot shorter, John, than a lot of the quarterbacks we've seen. In his last five games, a tremendous 10-touchdown, one-interception ratio. Well, you see right there, it's not only his presence, his leadership. This guy's a heck of a football player, and he's getting better as this season goes on, and it's showing for the Seattle Seahawks. First down from the 24. And throwing on first down, looking right, looking left, and going down, thanks to Kelvin Shepard, the middle linebacker. And a big defensive play on the first play from scrimmage, a loss of seven. And a sack for the Bills. And the Buffalo Bills going to come with pressure. There's Kelvin Shepard right there coming with pressure. He loops around, finds that crease, and goes and gets Russell Wilson. Great start for the Buffalo defense. Be very interesting to see how the Seahawks react. They beat the Chicago Bears a couple of weeks ago on the road. Did they get those road woes out of their system? Second and 17, and here's Marshawn Lynch. And Lynch with a good gain, and Lynch facing the Bills for the first time since his trade in October of 2010. And taking a look at the Seattle offense, they come in fourth in the league in rushing, and they have all the elements of a sound offense. And we're going to give them some love up front, and it starts with their center, Max Unger, very integral to their run game. They run the ball as well as anyone, as well as their protection. Sidney Rice, Russell Wilson's favorite target outside. Rice was in a walking boot most of the week, foot injury, but here he is full speed in practice on Friday. Third down and seven after the nine-yard pickup. And this pass is going to be caught for the first down by Rice. Sidney Rice, the leading receiver for the Seahawks. Full speed and shows it there. 17-yard play and a first down to the 44. And a really nice catch by Sidney Rice going and get it. Not the most accurate of throws. Unusual for Wilson, who's usually spot on. But a great catch by Sidney Rice extending the drive. Marshawn Lynch went out on the last play, but he's back in there now. And a first down. And here is Lynch. And Lynch will pick up a couple of yards. And it's Nigel Bradman, the rookie from Florida State, the strong side backer, holding Lynch to a gain of two. Well, over the last five games, this Bills unit has played its best of the season, John. It really has. Dave Wanstead's defense is coming to play. You see the last five games, 19 points a game. It starts up front. Defensive tackle Kyle Williams. Mario Williams has caught fire of late. And a ball hawk in the back end in Jarris Bird. Both teams a little depleted in the secondary. The Bills are playing two rookies at cornerback. And the Seahawks have several corners down as well. This is a play fake. And Wilson got that ability to get away. And he doesn't find a receiver and will go out of bounds. Chased out of bounds by Marcel Darius after picking up two and a half yards. 
Well, a common trait that Russell Wilson has with the great quarterbacks, you think the Peyton Mannings, the Tom Brady's, look at that attention to detail on the play-action pass. He's selling that play-action pass, nothing downfield. He makes a smart decision. He extends the ball, sells it with his eyes. He does that excellent, and it pays dividends for him and the Seahawks. If you're wondering where you've seen these uniforms last, you haven't. <laughs> these are the Wolf Gray alternate uniforms worn for the first time by the Seahawks. Empty backfield on third and seven at the 48. And the pass caught, and it's the tight end, Zach Miller, who gets the first down, eight-yard pickup, and a first down to midfield for the Seahawks. They're going to go in an empty formation, and he's just going to run a little option route off Nick Barnett there in the middle. A nice, accurate, on-time throw by Russell Wilson, and they move the chains once again. Reliable tight end, third leading receiver and a pro bowler with the Raiders two seasons ago. Another play fake, and there's the pass thrown to Robinson, the fullback, Michael Robinson, on the swing pass. And even when they don't gain a lot of yards, the Seahawks look awfully crisp on offense. That was a 20-yard pickup and a first down inside the 25. And it's just, that's what this offense is. They're going to run the football with Marshawn Lynch. They're going to play off that with the play action. Another great fake by Russell Wilson. Puts the ball in there. That draws the linebackers up. Michael Robinson slips out to the fat flat. Great execution. Look far better than the team that was ranked 30th offensively after the first seven games. Ball at the 25 of the Bills. And here is Lynch. Marshawn Lynch. And Lynch picking up eight yards on first down. Four minutes gone by here in the first quarter. Lynch with 100 rushing yards in six of his last eight games already has rushed for a career high. Over 1,270 yards. This is his sixth year, and they, there is the read option for Wilson. And Wilson's pass is caught inside the 15 for a first down to Doug Baldwin. Eight yards there. And this is a high-octane, rapid-fire offense we're seeing. And this is an excellent catch. You watch Doug Baldwin there working in the slot. Going to come back to Wilson as he extends the play. Watch this concentration. Catch the ball two feet down. Unbelievable catch by Doug Baldwin. So Wilson thus far is four for four for 53 yards. And a first down on the <laughs> Buffalo 14. Read option, and it's going to be the carry, and it's going to be the touchdown for Wilson. Russell Wilson with a 14-yard touchdown run. His first touchdown rushing of the season, and the Seahawks score on their first possession. And you watch this read option. He's going to read the end on the end of the line of scrimmage. He takes the dive. He'll, he'll keep it. He takes Russell Wilson. He'll give it to Marshawn Lynch. This time he takes the dive. Russell Wilson shows his speed. Another element he provides to a defense. Unbelievable execution on the first drive by Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks. Second leading rusher coming in behind Lynch and Steven Hauschka on a high snap. Put down by Clint Gresham effectively and Wilson leads the Seahawks on an impressive opening drive touchdown. And it's the 14-yard run, and Pete Carroll said nothing better on the road than to score early. Bucks trying to make it five wins in their last six games, and we talk about how this team really believes in Russell Wilson, John, and an impressive 10-play, 76-yard drive. And the kick going to Brad Smith, who downs it in the end zone for the touchback. So celebration time early in Canada for the Seattle Seahawks. Leading seven to nothing, but the Bills go on offense. Buffalo Bills with the ball trailing seven nothing and Ryan Fitzpatrick. That's his record as a starter for the Bills. First game he ever played for them was here in Toronto. Ready! 
And a whistle and a false start on the first snap. False start. Number 77 offense. Five yard penalty. Five yard first penalty. Down. Dick, you take a look at this last play. Watch Mario Williams. He's going to have the dive. If he has that, Brian Scott's got to be on Russell Wilson. Brian Scott instead takes the bait on the fake. Russell Wilson all alone, and it's too much speed for Brian Scott to recover. you got to be on your assignments, and Russell Wilson, always the leader on the sideline, says, good job, fellas. Keep it up. It's an imaginative offense because of Wilson. First down and 15 now, back to the 15-yard line. And going deep on first down, and this pass intended for T.J. Graham and covered by Jeremy Lane. So two rookies matched up there. Graham starting in place of Donald Jones and Lane for Walter Thurman. Well, Stevie Johnson's their go-to receiver. But Ryan Fitzpatrick, when we visited with him on Friday, said, we got to get T.J. Graham going in this game. They're going to play bump and run. He's our speed guy. we got to run by him. Problem is, Jeremy Lane is their speed guy. He's filling in for Brandon Browner, but he can flat out run. Walter Thurmond is out, and Marcus Trufant once again is out. Brandon Browner serving the second game of his four-game suspension. So the Seahawks thin at corner, second down and 17, and here is Spiller, C.J. Spiller, but the Seahawks are right there, led by K.J. Wright, holding Spiller to a gain of four. Here are some of the good speed guys that you talked about on offense today for the Bills. You see C.J. Spiller... Averaging over six yards per carry. Stevie Johnson, their go-to receiver. And we just talked about T.J. Graham. He's their speed guy. Somebody's got to make plays other than Spiller and Stevie Johnson. They're looking to Graham to be that guy. It has been an inconsistent offense, to say the least. Now Spiller moves back into the backfield. Third down and 11 with some time. And the pass to Spiller, but he'll be tackled by Wright. Good play by Wright in this first series. And... The Bills will lose eight, and it'll be fourth down, and they'll have to kick. Excellent play by Wright. You're going to see him on C.J. Spiller. He's going to diagnose the screen, and you got a great player like C.J. Spiller. You better come get him. You better come attack him, and that's exactly what K.J. Wright does. Tremendous football play by K.J. Wright. So now the Bills backed up, and Sean Powell will be kicking from the end zone, and Golden Tate and Leon Washington are back deep for the Seahawks. Good kick by Powell and here's Leon Washington has some open field to work with and finally is tackled at the 42 yard line after a 60 yard punt so Pete Carroll has to be pleased with the offense but how about the defense three and out good field position when we come back and welcome back to Canada where the Seattle Seahawks who Ropped over Arizona last week, 58 to nothing, a franchise record for point scores, helped by eight takeaways by the defense. 284 yards rushing. It was a thrashing by the Seahawks, and this team's playing the best football right when they need to. And today's results not hurting them if they do win. First down at the 42. Here is Wilson. Fakes it, and then gets it off to Lynch. And Lynch goes right by one of the defensive linemen and gets a first down. Kyle Williams unable to stop Marshawn Lynch, and he winds up with 14 yards, first down into Bills territory. I'll tell you what, Marshawn Lynch has always been an outstanding player since he's entered this league. But since he's gone to Seattle, and in particular this year, he's taken it to a different level. I see a different burst out of him. He's always been a guy that's going to move a pile, as you see at the end of this play, those legs churning. It takes a whole defense to get him down, but an integral part of this Seattle Seahawks football team. Now, Robert Turbin, the rookie from Utah State, he went over 100 yards last week against the Cardinals. He's in at running back, and here comes on the read option, and there is Wilson again. Scored a 14-yard touchdown. Goes out of bounds at the 25 and gets 19 yards here. Well, if you aren't going to play it correctly, they'll keep running it. Again here, Kyle Moore goes down on the dive, but someone's got to loop around on Russell Wilson on the keeper. They're not on their assignments. They'll continue to run it as long as they aren't. And Zach Miller, who always does an outstanding job of blocking, does right there again. So Wilson, who has passed for 67 yards, has now rushed for 34. And a first down on the Bills 25. 
Play fake. Wilson in trouble and finally goes down at the 27 yard line. Spencer Johnson gets Wilson for the first sack for the Bills and a loss that time of two. That's something that this defensive front for the Buffalo Bills can do. If you get back there and pass, they can get after you, but you got to stop the run first to have an opportunity. You got to earn the right to rush the passer. So it'll be second and 12, actually the second time that the Bills have gotten to Wilson. Big improvement for Buffalo's rushing defense. From the early part of the year, and the handoff is to Turbin. And Turbin gets his way back to the 25-yard line. So the two yards he lost, he gets back, and it'll be third down and 10. Durbin had 20 carries for 108 yards. Lynch had 128 yards against Arizona. You want to talk about padding your numbers. One thing Russell Wilson has done of late, we saw the numbers. Ten touchdowns his last five games, only one interception. Been protecting the football extremely well. Third down and ten. Wilson taking off with a little fake. Gets a first down and gets a touchdown. His second in this first quarter. And headaches for Chan Gailey on a 25-yard touchdown run. Well, this class of quarterbacks, they all have one thing in common. They can move. You're not going to stay with your lush, rush integrity. They'll beat you not only throwing the football, but if you allow them, they'll take it to the end zone running the football. Russell Wilson's done it twice today already. The Bills better have an answer. And the first two rushing touchdowns for a team that's done nothing but celebrate here in Toronto. And we still have 5.46 to go in the quarter. Hauschka with the extra point. And the Seahawks take a 14 to nothing lead. Five plays, 58 yards in Wilson's second touchdown run. So Chan Gailey's got to find an answer fast. It's been an early party for the Seahawks and for Russell Wilson. That's the total yard story. Two touchdowns on two possessions. That was the last score. And back deep is Marcus Easley. And Easley returns for the Bills, who were three and out the first time they had the ball. So Pete Garrell got to be happy with both sides of the ball, especially his rookie quarterback. And disbelief on the other side. And a little chewing out, perhaps, on the defensive side. Back here in Toronto, inside the Dome, the Bills starting this drive from the 28. Fitzpatrick has time, and he gets the tight end, Scott Chandler, who is open, and he'll have a first down. Chandler was wide open. Leroy Hill, the outside backer, makes the stop, and a pickup of 11. Seattle's defense, well, uh, you know, they spun the shutout, had the eight takeaways, including special teams. I know you're impressed with the great mix that they have, John. They do have a great, a great mix of big guys like Red Bryant, Bobby Wagner with speed and size, and then Richard Sherman on the outside, an old-school lockdown corner reminiscent of a Lester Hayes and Mike Haynes. This guy's fun to watch. Seahawks are really fortunate that Shepard or Sherman can continue to play here and the pass out to the flat to Stevie Johnson. First time he's handled the ball and Sherman who will be shadowing him all afternoon going against the top receiver for the Bills. Seven yard pickup. Stevie Johnson a really unique type of football player. Richard Sherman said, going to be a challenge because he's different than anybody you see. He'll try to lull you to sleep with patience. Jan Gailey calls him an artist. And you'll never see him run the same route twice, which sometimes makes it difficult on your quarterback, even if he went to Harvard. <laughs> Clearly the go-to guy for this team. And you can see Richard Sherman defending him in a man-to-man -man situation. Hand off to Spiller. Spiller trying to get outside. Only his second carry of the game. Game five in the first series, won this time, and Jeremy Lane, rookie from Northwestern State, starting 
for the first time in his career. And one thing, Jeremy Lane, you're going to see him at the end of the play, an outstanding job. C.J. Spiller likes to bounce the football. Look at Lane sitting there saying, come on outside. C.J. Spiller doesn't want to go inside. He doesn't have any choice. Good job of setting the edge, they call that, not letting C.J. Spiller bounce the football. Third down and one at the 47 of Buffalo. And Fitzpatrick completes the pass to Brad Smith and a first down into Seahawk territory to the 42-yard line, and that's been their offense. Peck away, and Fitzpatrick does that well, a gain of 10. They're going to have to peck away because it's very clear, and talking to Gus Bradley yesterday, we don't want to let these guys on top. We tell our corners, stay on top, make them earn everything they get. Brad Smith getting an opportunity with Donald Jones out today. Brad Smith, a former quarterback from the... New York Jets. We've seen him in the Wildcat a lot this year. First down at the 42 of Seattle. In motion is T.J. Graham to the left. And the handoff is to Spiller. Changes direction. And there's Spiller finding an opening. Spiller. Very nearly gets the first down. And a great exhibition of running there. He got eight yards before Richard Sherman put him down at the 34. Well, eight yards, but I think he does about 30 yards worth of work. And C.J. Spiller, he's going to bounce left, nothing there. Going to bounce right, then up, then out. This guy's all over the place. An electric football player. Good tackle by, C. Or by Richard Sherman at the end of the play. John, you mentioned leading the NFL rushers with a 6.6 .6 average per carry. That's better than even the great Adrian Peterson. Second down and two. At the 34, and here is Spiller. Stop and go, and he goes for the first down. Kim Camp Chancellor, the strong safety on the stop, a four-yard gain. And the Buffalo Bills moving the ball, trailing by two touchdowns. This is a good drive. They're exhibiting patience, grinding the ball out. You keep feeding Spiller, eventually he's going to pop one. He's that fast. He's that. He's got that kind of burst to him. And sometimes you aren't going to get the, the biggest gains, but you keep giving it to him, good things will happen. Goes and gets a breather on the sideline, and Tashar Choice replaces him in the backfield. First down at the 31 of Seattle. On the slant pass caught by Stevie Johnson. Perfectly executed slant and it'll be a first down at the 14. As the Bills pick up 17 yards, nearly a minute to go in the quarter. There's Stevie Johnson working on Sherman. Sherman said. As advertised, I'm going to get after him quickly, but Stevie Johnson goes right to the slant, and with that outside leverage, the accurate throw makes for a big play for the Bills. And a first down at the 14 as Spiller comes back into the lineup for the Bills. There's Spiller going outside. Spiller inside the 10. Spiller touchdown, Buffalo. And he can thank Lee Smith, one of the tight ends, for a superb block there. And we saw some good speed here. And Dick, there's an old saying, you can't teach speed. This kid is fast, and like I said, you keep handing him the ball, good things will happen. They should have been doing it more all season. I understand you got Fred Jackson, but this guy, as I said in the open, he's a game-changing player, C.J. Spiller. And Ryan Lindell will try to cut the Seahawks' lead in half after Spiller's 14-yard touchdown, and the kick is good, so the Bills in desperately in need of getting points here, get a touchdown, and Spiller, who has not carried more than 22 times in a game all season, gets the first touchdown for the Bills. Fourteen to seven to score, and uh, John, you talked about Russell Wilson and C.J. Spiller at the top, and have they delivered so far in this first quarter? Well, I'd like to take credit, but the credit goes to the good Lord because this man was born to run, and he can do it. You see C.J. Spiller. I mean, it's just a different kind of speed. You see T.J. Graham doing a nice job blocking on the perimeter, but you talk to both coaches. 
I played this game for 15 years. This is a different kind of speed. There's fast, and then there's really fast. This guy's really fast. Leon Washington back deep as Ryan Lindell with the short kick. And Washington fields it on the 10. With a head of steam, Leon Washington brings it out beyond the 30-yard line. And uh, that is where the Seahawks will start. Well, on January 4th, one of the best bowl games of the year is on Fox. As Heisman Trophy winner, one of the most talked about players in the country, Johnny Manziel, leads ninth-ranked Texas A&M against the 11th-ranked Oklahoma Sooners. The AT&T Cotton Bowl Classic, January 4th, only on Fox. Anytime you get a Heisman Trophy winner, you know you've got a little extra burst in the game. Absolutely. And the Cotton Bowl, they do an outstanding job. I had the opportunity a couple years ago to be a part of that broadcast with A&M against LSU, and that's a, a fun, fun, fun uh, situation down there at the Cotton Bowl. From the 34, first down for the Seahawks. Marshawn Lynch breaks a tackle, and Lynch picking up five yards. Jarris Bird, the free safety, making the tackle on Marshawn Lynch, who played 45 games with the Bills and has played 40 games now with the Seahawks. And that will do it for the quarter. That is the end of the first quarter here in Toronto with the score. The Seahawks 14 and the Bills 7 at Fox NFL Sunday will continue after a break from your local Fox station. Start of the second quarter, the Seahawks lead the Bills 14-7. You see Pete Carroll and Chris Richard, the defensive back coach, talking to Sherman, trying to figure this out. They got to bottle C.J. Spiller up. That will be key to winning this football game. Second down and four from the 40-yard line, and here is Lynch. Lynch driving, getting the first down. Tough to bring down. Power runner as he gets to the 46, picking up about six yards. Shepard making the tackle. You know, it's fun to, to watch Marshawn Lynch run the football because you just see will it's it's you just see the will of not wanting to go down You're gonna try to tackle me. I'm not gonna let you it's gonna take all 11 of you And I love watching it always have loved watching this guy I love competing against him Little Lynch on Lynch <laughs> Betcha there were a few collisions there, huh? First down and 10 at the 40 Six and the pitch going to Lynch and Lynch goes back a flea flicker and here is Wilson downfield and this one is going to be caught by Golden Tate. So Pete Carroll goes into his bag of tricks and a flea flicker and a first down and a gain of 44 yards to the 10. Toss the ball to Marshawn Lynch. He throws it backwards to Russell Wilson. And here comes Golden Tate, going to act like he's blocking, does a great job selling it, and then gets across the field on what they call a cross-country route. An excellent throw by Russell Wilson. Big play for the Seattle Seahawks. And what progress for Golden Tate, who has doubled his pass catching output in the last six games. First and goal at the 10. Here is Lynch, and Lynch will pick up two yards, bringing up second down and goal. When you get to the red zone, not an easy thing, but look at Russell Wilson's no interceptions this year in the red zone. And you just hit on it, partner, because that, this is where most of the turnovers in the league happen. It's condensed space. Everything's constricted. And so, therefore, a lot more turnovers happen. He's protected the football beautifully, most importantly, down here when they have scoring opportunities. You know, no Seahawk quarterback has ever rushed for three touchdowns in a game. We'll see what happens on second and goal at the nine. And here is Wilson's pass overthrowing Golden Tate. And it'll be third and goal. That is the first incomplete pass thrown by Russell Wilson. And it occurs a couple of minutes into the second quarter. Big reason, Dick, that he has such a high completion percentage. He's at 63% for the year. We see him six or seven. If he doesn't like it, he's got those legs. He can turn around and run rather than just throw the football away. They're three for three on third downs. Robert Turbin has come in as the running back. Third and goal from the nine. 
And here is Wilson pass, and it's caught, but it'll be short of the first down. Sidney Rice stopped a yard shy of the first down, and a good defensive play that time. An excellent little combination here. You see Doug Baldwin with a little rub route, giving Sidney Ray Rice some space. Throw right on the money, but Rice can't quite get in there. And it's the rookie, Stephon Gilmore, who made the touchdown saving tackle, so they're going for the field goal here. Steven Hauschka. 19 of 22 for the year. This will be a 19-yard attempt as Rice coming over to the sideline. And the kick is good. And the Seahawks extend their lead to 17 to 7. The skyline of Toronto at dusk with the CN Tower on the left. 10 points, Seattle lead. Seahawks lead 17 to 7, working on Sidney Rice. Seven plays, 65 yards, and it was the flea flicker, 44 yards to Golden Tate, which set up the field goal. And back deep will be Marcus Easley and Brad Smith. Easley on the right. And it's going to go to Brad Smith. And they'll go to the 20-yard line where the Bills trail by 10 right now for a game break. Let's check in with Patrick O'Neill. All right, Dick, thanks. Panthers and the Charger. Carolina already up 14-0. Tip drill is in effect. Cam Newton's pass tip. D'Angelo Williams gets it. And he goes 45 yards to the house of the touchdown. Well, Carolina eliminated, but playing with a lot of heart. San Diego with a loss, officially eliminated from the playoffs. 21-0 start of the second. Dick and John, back to you. All right, Patrick, thank you very much, along with John Lynch and Jennifer Hale, who will be hearing from shortly. The Seahawks leading 17-7 early here in the second quarter. It'll be first down for the Bills at the 20. C.J. Spiller has gained 32 yards on five carries. This will be a pass out to T.J. Graham, and the pass is incomplete. J. Graham is a rookie from North Carolina State, a third-round draft choice. And Ryan Fitzpatrick said, we're kind of figuring out his role. We know what he can do. He's a big play guy, but we need him to start acting like one on a consistent basis. They thought this would be a great opportunity. you got to catch the ball when it's thrown to you. You're going to rely on a downfield threat with Donald Jones inactive today. Second down and 10. Fitzpatrick's pass is caught by Graham. And Graham gets five yards. You see the marks of good defenses, and one of the marks of great defenses to me is they may let you catch it, but they're, they're going to swarm you right after, and that's what you see from this defense. They pr play primarily man-to-man. -man. They mix in some zone. When they do play that zone, you catch it, you can expect a bunch of Seahawks swarming to you and going to hit you when they get there. They've allowed the second fewest points to the 49ers in the league. Fourth against the pass. Third down and five. Spiller goes in motion. They got three receivers, and this one is a ground ball that goes right past Spiller. Incomplete pass. And Ryan Fitzpatrick will go to the sideline. So a rough series right there for Chan Gailey and the Bills down by 10 and have to kick. And that's just a that's a bad throw. You've got C.J. Spiller. We've seen how electric he can be. You got to be able to throw him the ball accurately and then you never know what can happen. He had certainly had the first down may have had much more. Leon Washington. And Sean Powell and running up is Washington and a great special teams tackle by Ruvel Martin present, prevented further gain. So Russell Wilson will go back to work. And what a job he's done so far in a 10-point Seahawk lead. Well, if you're not going to start in this league, you better be able to make hay on special teams. <laughs> Watch Ruvel Martin. You think that's easy? And then this. Tackling Leon Washington in open field. That's a guy who has eight touchdown returns in his career. You see Leon Washington says, that doesn't happen to me. Great job by Ruvel Martin. Seahawks on their 42, leading 17 to 7. Russell Wilson. 
being chased out of the pocket. And throws the ball away. It was Mario Williams, the former Houston Texan, who leads the team with ten and a half sacks, who chased Wilson. Now let's take a look at the first three possessions for the Seattle Seahawks and Wilson scoring touchdowns on runs on the first two and then the field goal the third. Can't ask for more than that. Uh, it's been pretty darn good. And see Russell Wilson, Dick. I, you know, we had the opportunity to do a Washington game a couple times earlier this year. You're so impressed with Robert Griffin. Same type of kid. This kid blows you away with the way he's playing, but his presence just unbelievable. Remember, he was picked on the third round out of Wisconsin, and here is Marshawn Lynch breaks it up the middle, and Lynch has one man to beat. Cuts toward the middle and is finally brought down inside the five by George Wilson the strong safety a 54 yard run by Marshawn Lynch and the Seahawks are in business again well this read option continues to wreak havoc on the Buffalo Bills somebody has to have the dive you see that hole anyone could run through that hole let alone Marshawn Lynch Dave Wanstead said one of the keys to this game is having an answer for the read option they clearly have not and it's killing them well, we'll never know what the reaction would have been had this game played in Orchard Park with the Buffalo fans seeing Lynch come back. He gets sort of a neutral deal here in Canada, first and goal. And here is Wilson, lost this for the touchdown to Zach Miller. Right now, Russell Wilson and the Seahawks offense making it look easy. And it's 23 to 7, still early in the second quarter. And for Miller, his third touchdown of the season. Dick, we told you earlier, it always starts with the play action. And he does it as well as the Peyton Mannings of the world. You get those DBs to hesitate just a little bit. Guys like Zach Miller can make good on a throw like that from Russell Wilson. Hauschka for the 24th point. And the Seahawks lead 24 to 7. C.J. Spiller's touchdown, remember, ended a run of 78 straight Seahawk points, but they went right back to work. And it was the great run by Lynch that set it up. It's 24 to 7, Seattle. Seahawks now leading 24 to 7. They have not punted yet this afternoon, nor have they committed a penalty. You might say it's almost a perfect game if Brad Smith will down it for the touchback and the Bills will begin again from the 20 scoring drive and there's Wilson talking to his team still. And Dick, I made this comment to you and our crew the other day. He reminds me of Peyton Manning. He speaks the same language. He has the same attention to detail. We hear about this legendary work ethic. He works the sidelines. He goes back and forth. I don't mean to put him that he's the next Peyton Manning already, but he, a lot of the qualities that Peyton Manning, the Drew Brees, the Brady's have, this young man uh, demonstrates on a regular basis. Astute move by John Schneider, the general manager, spotted him at the Senior Bowl, sold him easily to Pete Carroll and company. Hope he'll be there on the third round. He was, and you can see the dividends he's paid. From the 20-yard line, here is Spiller, and he'll be stopped behind the line. A five-yard loss, and it was Earl Thomas, talk about speed, who got in there in a hurry and a loss of four officially. Earl Thomas is a fantastic football player. He reminds me a lot of Troy Palomalo. You see him bursting through the line of scrimmage. That's attacking a runner like C.J. Spiller. Wonderful play by Earl Thomas. And just to put the seal on it was K.J. Wright, who has made several good plays thus far. So second down and 14. Second down and 14, Fitzpatrick's pass dropped. T.J. Graham looked like it was a catchable pass there, incomplete, and it'll be third down. We, we've been showing you Russell Wilson on his play action throughout the game. You see Ryan Fitzpatrick, that play action fake's not going to hold anybody. As a consequence, at the end of the play, who's making the play? The linebacker underneath. If you don't hold the linebackers with a strong play action pass, those linebackers are going to be back there on zone coverage. Speaking of linebackers, Arthur Motes shaken up and went to the locker room for the Bills. It's an ankle injury for Motes. 
Now third down and 14 with the empty backfield. And Fitzpatrick going against the grain to throw and uh, doesn't get much. And it was Bruce Urban, the number one draft pick from West Virginia, who's had a terrific rookie year at backer. And Bobby Wagner, another rookie from Utah State, the middle linebacker in a three-yard gain. And fourth down coming up, and the Bills will have to kick from inside their 10. And Pete Carroll congratulated his players as well he should. I talked about that mix. You got your big boys like Red Bryant, Brandon Meebane, and Allen Branch, and then you've got the speed guys like Irvin and Clemens. It's a great mix on this defense. Good high kick by Powell. Fair catch by Washington. And so the Seahawks with Marshawn Lynch, who's already rushed on a 54-yard play, and the rest of this offense leading big right now. Seahawks on the attack again, and that means Marshawn Lynch, who was the Bills' first-round draft pick, 12th overall in 07, played four years and had a pretty good career, didn't he? 17 touchdowns, 2,700 yards, traded to Seattle in October of 2010, and right now he has 1,348 yards as a result of his 82 so far in this game. First down at the 38 for Russell Wilson. And there's the read option. They hand it off to Marshawn Lynch, breaks a couple of tackles, gets another first down as he approaches midfield. Bird, the free safety on the tackle, he gets 12. Uh, I'm sure Dave Wanstead is just pulling his hair out because he knew it. He said this is the key to the game, being able to stop this read option. They have had no answers. You, you can have the assignment down, but then you've got to deal with both Marshawn Lynch and Russell Wilson, tough guys to tackle in space. Haven't come close to finding the answer yet. First down at midfield, and keeping it is Wilson going to the outside and sits down. Maybe a yard, that's all. For more on Marshawn Lynch, let's check in with the third member of our team, Jennifer Hale. Well, Dick, you know, the Bills are in the final year of a five-year agreement with Rogers Communications to bring one of Buffalo's games here to Toronto. It's an important one. It's part of their regionalization initiative to shore up fan bases in western New York and across Canada. Makes sense. 15% of the Bills' season ticket holders are from Canada, and it is a 112-mile trip to the Bills' home stadium. So lots of folks hoping that comes to fruition one of the NFL's three international venues alongside of London and Mexico City, Dick. All right, Jennifer, and here is Wilson. And Wilson has a wide open Sidney Rice. And Rice going down the sideline with a fake and a couple of extra yards. Another big gain for Seattle. Well, the Bills lost the first three years they played here in Toronto, beat the Redskins last year 23-0, but they're getting shellacked right now 24-7. That was a 41-yard play, and once again, the Seahawks threatened. And this is the National Football League. Guys like Sidney Rice should not be that wide open. That's a flat-out drop of coverage, a miscommunication. The Buffalo Bills not playing good football on defense today and just making it easy for Russell Wilson and these Seahawks. Again, first and goal at the 10. Seahawks have already gained 309 yards. And we still have 640 to play in this first half. And a timeout called by the Seahawks. Take a look at this last play. It's going to be Sidney Rice right here coming across in motion. Just a miscommunication. When you get in those bunch rounds, you have to sh sort it out, but that's what you practice all week. And Russell Wilson said, this is easy right now. You aren't going to cover him. I'll give it to Sidney Rice, and he'll go do some damage. Rice, the leading receiver, he said had a foot injury, went full speed at the end of the week and was shaken up earlier and came back in. Those are Wilson's numbers. 59 yards rushing, 164 yards passing. Dick, this is a hot football team. This is a team that went to Chicago three weeks ago, won in overtime, a come from behind win. They shall lack the Arizona Cardinals last week, 58 to nothing. And now you look at this, 24-7. This team's playing great football. Peaking when they need to, John, no question about it. And they have two division games at home to finish the regular year against the 49ers and the Rams. First and goal, here is Lynch. And Lynch will be knocked back. Flag is down. And that is only the second penalty thrown in this game. Bills had a one-yard penalty, and this is the first penalty called against the Seahawks.
One thing that has really impressed me about Russell Wilson is that this isn't a real simple offense he's running. They run multiple formational groups, multiple different type of schemes, the read option, the play action passing game, the drop back passing game. They put a lot on his plate and he handles it all beautifully. Holding was called on Anthony McCoy and now they go to Lynch up the middle. He's been tough to stop as he drives his way inside the 15 picking up seven Wilson the strong safety on the tackle. This has been dominated heavily by the Seahawks as Russell Wilson scored rushing touchdowns on the first two possessions. When you look at the attention to detail watch after this play watch Russell Wilson you think he's going to carry out that fake he continues to run down the sidelines he does it each and every time he hands the ball off and great things happen when you pay attention to the tiny details Lynch 100 yards seventh in the last nine games he's had 100 here is Wilson with the carry on the keeper inside the five and Wilson gets in for the touchdown his third and the first Seahawk quarterback to ever rush for three touchdowns in a game and he does it in a half we see him that last play he's going to go ahead and fake it hand off the ball and then fake it around this time he fakes the handoff and then he goes around that's the predicament the bills on are in they have not responded and russell wilson is too good if you're not on your assignment he'll make you pay every time that was a 13 yard touchdown run and his first touchdowns rushing all year have all happened in this first half today and stephen hauschka who's been Busy adding extra points and field goals, and it is now a 31 to 7. Seattle lead with 531 to go in the second. See the frustration on Mario Williams and the Buffalo Bills. Look at Russell Wilson. There's the first touchdown. They don't have an answer for the read option. He'll make you pay. Now he's going to get back there to pass. You don't have anybody in your rush lanes. Russell Wilson will just take it to the end zone. And here's the last one going to the read option again. They follow Marshawn Lynch. Somebody better have Russell Wilson. Uh -uh. Third touchdown of the day rushing for Russell Wilson. And as we said, a first for the Seahawks quarterback. Two touchdowns scored by Dave Craig in 1984 and Jim Zorn in 1978. And Mario Williams really has to be terribly upset and Kyle Williams as well mostly Kyle it seems and a 31 to 7 pasting with 531 to go in the hand Easley and Smith are back deep Brad Smith on the return for Buffalo and he lost his footing shy of the 20 and for a game break let's check in with Kurt Menefee well, the Cowboys, one of those teams in the wild card hunt, at least for now, with Seattle. They had a 3-0 lead against Pittsburgh. DeMarco Murray, though, fumbled as they were going in to extend that lead. The Steelers recover, and as they start the second quarter, it's still 3-0, Dallas on top. Vic and John. All right, Kurt, thank you very much. How about these scoring drives, partner? 76 yards, 58, 65, 58, and 62. Four touchdowns and a field goal for the Seahawks. They're going the long way, and then they're finishing, not with field goals, but touchdowns. Bills from the 18. Spiller. Good job with uh, a defender on him, and it was Allen Branch up front. So C.J. Spiller with a six yard gain. How about this? The Seahawks have outgained the Bills 329 to 78 thus far. I don't care if you're in Canada, the USA, that's domination wherever you are. We happen to be in Toronto and it is total domination for the Seattle Seahawks. There are some fans from the Seahawks yeah. territory because they have a good following in Vancouver, British Columbia and in Western Canada who have been evident here. Second down and four, here's Spiller. Cutting inside has a first down. Pretty good run by Spiller down the sideline and out of bounds. So C.J. Spiller with an 18-yard pickup now has averaged six and a half yards per carry in eight attempts. 
You see why. He's got the vision. He's got the strength. He's going to bust through a tackle, an arm tackle. And then he's just, again, I keep saying it, but this guy plays at a different rate of speed than everybody else in this league. Reminiscent of Chris Johnson when he was really going about three, four years ago. Deshar Choice replaces Spiller, who gets the breather. Brad Smith going in motion. Play action for Ryan Fitzpatrick. Ducks under one defender. And ended up with something when it appeared he was going to be dumped for a loss. Missing the tackle was Chris Clemens, the defensive end, and uh, Fitzpatrick gets four yards out of it. It was pretty crafty or just self-preservation. He's about to get his head taken off by Chris Clemens and does the old okie doke Says, Russell Wilson, you're not the only one who can have some fun today. Nice run run by Ryan Fitzpatrick. You know, John, I got to ask you, 31 to 7, still in the second quarter, you can't take Spiller out of the game as far as runs, can you? Normally you just pass, but you can't hear. I think he's their biggest opportunity at explosive play. He's so explosive, whether it's running it to him, throwing it to him, you got to get him the football. Spiller back in there now and gets the ball on second down and six. And this time gets hit and hit hard by Byron Maxwell. Maxwell and Jeremy Lane forced into more action with Trufant and Thurman out. So Spiller, who will have some negative yards, and only uh, on one occasion has he had that so far. You see that 5.9 average, actually a down day for him coming in, averaging 6.6 .6 a carry. But again, you just keep feeding him. Here comes the 60-yarder. He's so explosive. Third down and five from the 47. It's Patrick's pass, and it's caught by Scott Chandler in a first down. So Chandler, very reliable tight end that Fitzpatrick really likes to go to, picks up nine yards and moves the chains into Seattle territory. Chandler's really making a nice career for himself. A big body goes 6'7" just eats up ground with those strides you typically see him on the seam routes going right down the middle of the field and Ryan Fitzpatrick really enjoys throwing the football to him. Spiller has caught one pass for minus nine but 53 yards on nine attempts as John pointed out. First down on the 44 low snap Fitzpatrick and great catch is made by Chandler. Great control by Scott Chandler and he winds up with 22 yards to the 22 yard line of Seattle as we wind down to the two minute warning. Great move by Chandler. They say the Bills have a 15 percent fan base here in Toronto and uh, hoping their team can get another score before intermission. Two minute warning. First down and 10, Fitzpatrick's pass, and it's thrown incomplete to T.J. Graham. He dropped one earlier, and uh, this one was thrown behind him, but he was open. Thrown behind him, but this is the National Football League, and this is a catch you have to make. You see a good play action this time by Ryan Fitzpatrick, thrown in rhythm. Could be a better throw, but again, you got to make that catch. Was it Tom Landry who used to say it touches your hands? You catch the football, right? Right. They're not always going to be on the numbers, as they say. Second down and 10. Spiller trying to find a hole, and you can see the Seahawks trying to jar the ball loose from C.J. Spiller, who picks up three yards on the play, 145 to go, and moving. And you can also see the Seahawks. Gus Bradley, their outstanding young defensive coordinator, he talked about it's going to take all 11 with a guy like C.J. Spiller. You can't leave it to one guy. you got to get 11 guys to the football. Team defense, it's assignment defense. They're doing it with a nice job today. Third down and seven. All at the 20. There's Spiller going in motion as a receiver to the top of your picture. Fitzpatrick. And wide open for the touchdown is Stevie Johnson. So Ryan Fitzpatrick comes back with a touchdown pass of his own. 20 yards, and the Bills get their second TD of the half. You see Stevie Johnson, he's going to come on this corner route, going to come inside, sell the post, and 
that's where he gets him at the top of the stem of that route. He sells the post. That gets Sherman to think inside. An easy throw for Ryan Fitzpatrick. There's a good drive for the Buffalo Bills. You know, John, they said that he grew up playing basketball and he runs routes the same way, and that could be one of the reasons he gets free like that. Ryan Lindell for the extra point, and it's now 31 to 14. So the Bills come back, and Fitzpatrick gets the touchdown. He's now 9 of 14 for 91 yards, and Halftime is coming up shortly, the Visa Halftime Report. And to fill you in, here is Kurt Menefee. Coming up on the Visa Halftime Show, we'll get you all caught up in a great day of action in the NFL, including a huge one for Adrian Peterson and the Vikings. Plus, who leads the NFC East now? Find that out and much more when we come back on the Visa Halftime. Get to work, guys. Right? Hey, these guys follow orders, don't they? <laughs> they do well. <laughs> guys, that's a good, great group of guys. Great players, great coaches. They have a lot of fun and they do their job extremely well. 22nd touchdown pass thrown by Fitzpatrick. So it's 31 to 14. And keep in mind that you're going to get the playoff situation up to date, and that is the Seahawks with a victory. And if the 49ers lose to New England later, the Seahawks would move into a tie with the 49ers, which seemed like a runaway few weeks ago for them in the NFC West and those two teams clash next week and we were talking as a crew at dinner last night who's the dark horse who could be that team that surprises it may well be the Seattle Seahawks you look at what they've done the last two weeks they got to finish today and that's most important taking care of their business this team is hot and playing football very well right now no question about it Leon Washington is back deep and will run it out from the three Leon Washington is stopped at the 22. Game break time again. Patrick O'Neill delivers for us. All right, Dick. Steelers at the Cowboys. Tony Romo play action. Jason Witten, he loves that guy. 17 yards, touchdown. So with the Redskins winning earlier, the Giants losing. If the Cowboys were to win, speaking of those playoff chases, a three-way tie atop the NFC East at 8-6. Dick and John. All right, thank you very much, Patrick. And, of course, Seattle right now at 8-5 and five would be the number one wild card. And right now they'd be ahead of the Giants, at Minnesota, Chicago. Because Dallas winning could go to 8-6, and six, but Seattle, they win their ninth game, could be in the driver's seat and maybe better. First and 10 at the 23. Leon Washington now in the backfield as Wilson's pass drills it, and the pass is incomplete, no flag there, and Doug Baldwin... The intended receiver. I'll tell you, even on the incompletions, it looks pretty from Russell Wilson. Yeah. That would have been a tough catch for Doug Baldwin, but an absolute dart thrown down the field. He can put some velocity on that football as well. Nine of 12 is Wilson for 164 yards, has thrown for one touchdown, and has rushed for three. Second down and 10. Under a minute remaining in the half. And there is the screen to Washington who drops that pass. Third down coming up for the Seahawks. He had a nice play there to Leon Washington, a returner who can do some things in space. He's got to catch that football, concentrate and bring it in. Well, in the last uh, game and a half, they have outscored their foes 89 to 14. You mentioned the whopping shutout win against the Cardinals last week. Third down and 10. And the handoff to Washington. And the Bills cheering and uh, forcing Seattle to punt for the first time. Good penetration by Jarris Bird, the free safety. And the Bills have called a timeout there first. Let's focus in on the NFC playoff picture here. Atlanta with a big win today against the Giants. Team they could meet again. 49ers play later. Green Bay Packers clinched. The NFC North would win over the Chicago Bears, who right now would be out of the wild card situation. 
and a big win for the Redskins as well. So many people in contention. I tell you, the one team that has surprised me, the New York Giants. I keep on waiting for them to make that run. Atlanta handed it to them today. Michael Strahan, you better get your Giants going. But as I see that Seattle team and Pete Carroll's group, you're right. I think they're a team that has really gone unnoticed in many quarters. Their quarterback playing this well, their defense playing this well, they can do some damage. John Ryan punting to Justin Rogers. And a fair catch is called. Well, don't miss the epic two-night finale. Only the X Factor can deliver. First on Wednesday, the final three face-off live for your vote. And then on Thursday, some of the biggest names in music perform live plus. Find out who wins the $5 million prize. The X Factor two-night season finale is live this Wednesday and Thursday on Fox. Dick, here's a critical situation for the Buffalo Bills. You want to stay in this game, at least a field goal would be really nice right now. Last week, they did not execute this situation well. They ended up kicking a field goal on third down. It made a lot of people unhappy. Got to drive the ball downfield. You've got plenty of time with 41 seconds. Last series, Fitzpatrick threw a touchdown pass to Stevie Johnson. First and 10 at the 34. And this one will be caught by Stevie Johnson and out of bounds. So Johnson getting free. And the Bills yelling for a late hit there that is not called. And it was Byron Maxwell defending 24 yards. You see Stevie Johnson working on K.J. Wright. He tries to get hands. They're playing a zone principle. And Stevie Johnson's going to eat that up. That's a very nice throw by Ryan Fitzpatrick. So Johnson now has caught four passes for 68 yards including a touchdown and now in Seahawk territory with 34 seconds left and two timeouts a first down this Patrick caught by Spiller and Spiller trying to get away and won't actually gave ground was about three yards short of the first down gave ground and Jeremy Lane finally got him and uh, time is of the importance for the Bills here. They used up a few seconds there. Two interesting things on that play. Earl Thomas nearly comes away with an interception flashing through that screen. And then C.J. Spiller attempts to bounce that football. Ends up losing yards in the process. But sometimes you got to take that with a guy that explosive. You got to try to let him make something big happen. So second down and four coming up on the Visa Halftime Report. Kurt Terry, Howie Michael, and Jimmy scores and highlights from around the league and a good discussion on the playoff situation. Second down and four from the 36. Longest field goal success by Lindell was 50 yards this season. Second and four, pass caught by the reliable Scott Chandler. And with one timeout remaining, the Bills will hurry up and maybe clock it here. The ball is on the 23. And they do with nine seconds on the clock. So what do you do with nine seconds to go when you're down by this much? Well, I think you now with the having clocked it, you still have that one timeout in your pocket. You take a shot at the end zone. This gives you the opportunity you can throw it down around the five and allow someone to run it in. If they don't get in, you get that timeout as well. This is a good execution of the clock and time management by Chan Gailey and the Bills. Ryan Lindell waiting in the wings just in case. Second down and ten, but down's not the important thing. Ball is at the 24 and takes his shot there and four seconds remain and the field goal team will come on for the Bills so they'll try to get three and Ryan Lindell who is 19 of 20 comes on just playing the old school Tampa two. Gus Bradley did come from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers they play a little different style here but will employ that Fitzpatrick doesn't like the look and essentially throws it away Going for his 15th in a row. This will be a 41-yard attempt by Lindell. And Lindell's kick is good. 
And so the Buffalo Bills score the last 10 points of this first half. That's the end of the half. It's 31 to 17. We now go to Kurt Menefee in Los Angeles for the Visa halftime, which starts now. Third quarter coming up with the Seahawks leading the Bills 31 to 17. Follow your favorite team all season long. Go to iTunes.com slash NFL. And you know, you can hear what we're going to show you on iTunes, and that is Psy, Gangnam Style. And what a performance at halftime here. What is it? Open Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style. Sai approaching a billion viewers on YouTube. What a phenomenon that is. And uh, third quarter getting underway, John. And my simple question is, how do we follow that? <laughs> Well, maybe by talking about another phenomenon, Russell Wilson, because he's been nearly unstoppable today. He's done it with his legs. He's done it throwing the football. The Bills have inched back into this game. It's a two-score game now. Now they got to have an answer for Russell Wilson in this Seahawk offense. They get the ball first, and uh, so far it looks like uh, after the early uh, uh, jitters on offense, it looks like Fitzpatrick is pecking away effectively. They've had a couple nice drives, and remember, you still have C.J. Spiller. He can break it at any time. And you got to look for more of that today. They got to keep scoring because it doesn't look like they're going to have much success stopping Wilson in this offense for Seattle. All right, right now let's go down to the field and check in with Jennifer Hale. Well, Dick, Coach Pete Carroll would agree with you and John that that read option worked very well in the first half, but he doesn't want the Bills to know what to expect, so he tells me he may mix it up a little bit more in the second half. As far as Russell Wilson, he's very pleased with the decisions he's been making. Feels like he's made all the right calls. Out of his defense, though, he wants to see more takeaways. He thinks that's lacking in this game, and he really wants them to step it up, similar to what we saw out of the Seahawks' D last game. Dick? You know, it's interesting what Jennifer learned about the fact that the read option uh, it may, you know, take a back seat a little bit here I'll believe it when I see it <laughs> when it's working you keep running it till they stop it Hauschka kicking off to Justin Rogers running it out for the Bills and here is Rogers and loose ball fumble and recovered by the Seahawks the signal is that it was a fumble recovered by the Seahawks. Was he done? Down. Heath Farwell forced it. Look at that right knee of Rodgers. Looks like the ball's down. Now the, the knee is down. Now the question is the ball coming loose already. Knee down. It looks like the ball is starting to move. It can be interesting to see how Scott Green determines this. All turnovers reviewed. We see Farwell get that hand in there. Knees down. Knees down, but is that ball coming loose? That's going to be the decision Scott Green has to make. Malcolm Smith recovered the fumble, and it is under review right now. We'll take a break as Scott Green will look at all the replays. We are in a booth review right now as to whether there was a fumble here. The call on the field was that it was a fumble recovered by Seattle. You see the right knee down, then the ball starts to come loose, and it's just a, it's going to be Scott Green's judgment. At, okay, the knee's down right there. Is that ball already coming loose? You see Heath Farwell's hand on the ball. Indisputable visual evidence to change the call. Pete Carroll said he wanted turnovers. He may get one in a hurry from his special teams unit. They did a good job on the takeaways last week, too. Here's After Green. reviewing the play, the runner's knee was down with possession of the ball. It'll be Buffalo's ball, first and 10 on the 24-yard line. Please reset the game clock to 14 minutes and 57 seconds. So Justin Rogers was down. 
Ryan Fitzpatrick with the touchdown pass. C.J. Spiller is now at the 1,000 mark. First time in his career for C.J. Spiller to get to 1,000. And Stevie Johnson with four catches, including a touchdown reception. I think when you look at C.J. Spiller as compared to backs around the league that are at that 1,000-yard march, Mark, far less carries for C.J. Spiller. He gets banged for his buck when he does touch the football. He's only carried it 10 times. First down at the 24. And here is Fitzpatrick, and he'll go down. Good coverage downfield by the secondary, and Chris Clemens picking up his 10th sack of the year for the Seahawks. First time they've gotten the Fitzpatrick, and he loses 10. Well, the Seahawks put eight guys in the box and challenged them to throw deep. He looks deep, nothing's there, and then Clemens beats the left tackle, Cordy Glenn, to get, as you said, Dick, his 10th sack of the year. Productive season for Chris Clemens. Pete Carroll, who has uh, really installed a lot of energy in the Seattle franchise. Empty backfield here, second down and 20, back on the 14. Fitzpatrick looks like he wants all of it back and very nearly does. Spiller downfield as a receiver. First time he's gone deep and covered well by Earl Thomas. I'll tell you what, this is a guy who runs 10-2 in the 100. I didn't think you could overthrow him. He does have separation on Earl Thomas who can run himself, but this is a mismatch in favor of the Bills and just a tiny bit of an overthrow for Ryan Fitzpatrick. Spiller came into the game as the fourth leading receiver for the Bills with one touchdown catch. So here's Fitzpatrick, four of five on third downs. Coming up with enough yardage on three occasions. Third down and 20. Here comes the pressure on Fitzpatrick, drills it, and another great catch by Stevie Johnson, a one-handed grab. And Johnson with a great catch going high for a 25 yards here first down. Well, I thought we had the catch of the year last week by Jason Avana, the Eagles. But take a look at this one handed outstretched the concentration and then the skill to bring that football in. Incredible catch by Stevie Johnson. And that is his fifth catch of the game. And he caught it at the point. He caught it on the end of the football. First and ten, and the flag goes down. We haven't had many penalties. This will be a full start. Full start, number 85, offense. And it's Five against Lee penalty. Smith. First down. One of the two tight ends in there now for Chan Gailey and the Bills. This deserves another look. I mean, you just look at outstretched completely, one hand at the point, and the concentration to bring it in, and then he deserves a little celebration right there. Talking about on the point. <laughs> he had it on the roll there. First down and 15 now. Stevie Johnson, who earlier caught his sixth touchdown pass of the season. It's Patrick has time, and this is intercepted. K.J. Wright. And going out of bounds is Wright. And that'll be his first interception of the year. And there is Chan Gailey with a few words for Stevie Johnson and now the pick. There's K.J. Wright. He's going to read the eyes of Ryan Fitzpatrick. And Ryan Fitzpatrick just locks in on Scott Chandler. And you do that that much. You lock in on a receiver that much in the NFL. Guys like K.J. Wright will come out with the football. And a 24-yard return, and the Seahawks are on the Bills' 20. A couple of minutes into this third quarter. And a first down for Russell Wilson. Going to the air on first down. Can't find anybody, but he can get away, and does. And he picks up about six yards in the process can tell you from having played against a quarterback like this that can move within the pocket it's so frustrating because you finally get the coverage downfield you think you've got him but uh-uh he's going to step to the left he's going to step up and then he's going to look downfield and then go ahead and run it 
at the end of that, it's a seven-yard gain, and you're looking at second and three. He frustrates defenses with his excellent play. And when it's clutch time, he's been big there. He's not in that situation here, but he's had a, several big comeback wins. Second down and three at the 13, and the handoff is to Lynch going outside. First down, Lynch walks in for the score. Marshawn Lynch, who had a 54-yard run to set up an earlier score, gets his first touchdown of the game. Assignment football right there. Kyle Moore, you got to contain that football. you got to force him back to all your teammates. You don't get that done. Marshawn Lynch out the door, untouched for a touchdown. That's bad defense by the Buffalo Bills. He ran 13 yards for his 10th rushing touchdown of the year. And... Instead of the Bills trying to close the gap, Seattle widens it, and the extra point is blocked. Steve Hauschka has his extra point blocked by Alex Carrington, a defensive lineman, but not to take anything away from Marshawn Lynch. Fitzpatrick throwing the interception. That burns the Bills. It's now 37-17. It's been a Seahawks day here in Toronto. Marshawn Lynch with his 10th touchdown. The former Bill coming back playing his former team for the first time. Brad Smith runs this out from the end zone. And Smith finds some running room. And a good tackle made there to prevent a further gain. Well, the Seahawks are getting it done on offense and defense and rolling out to a 20-point lead early here in the third. Third time this year, the Seahawks have scored at least 30 points. They had 30 against the Vikings, scores 58 last week, and have 37 right now early in the third. Bills from the 34. Flag down. They're going to stop the play. False start, five-yard penalty. Third time against Buffalo. False start. Ball start. Offense. Number well, C.J. Spiller, as we down. mentioned, 56 okay. yards, and that's exactly what he needed to get to his first career 1,000-yard season. How about some of these running backs that the Buffalo Bills have had throughout, including Lynch did it twice, Thurman Thomas eight times, and some of the other great ones. I think given the ball more, C.J. Spiller would have had three on his hands. He's been in the league three years. When you give that guy the ball enough, and I understand you've had Fred Jackson, but this guy, as I mentioned earlier, game-breaking player, they got to find a way to get him the football more often on a consistent basis. Try to go deep to, to him once. This pass is thrown underneath, and it's caught by Johnson. Picked up eight on that play. Three minutes elapsed here in the third quarter. Dick Stockton along with John Lynch and Jennifer Hale. Steelers Cowboys in a big game obviously for both teams Cowboys uh, locked in a big fight Giants went down today Minnesota won and Chicago went down Cowboys right in the thick of it second and seven second and seven up the middle another catch by Johnson Let's see if forward progress gives him the first down, and it appears it did. Picking up eight yards more, and that's his seventh catch. And right now for a game break, let's check in with Patrick O'Neill. All right, Jake, and let's check in on the Steelers and the Cowboys right before the half. Now, if you give Big Ben too much time, he's going to hurt you. But if you give him 10 seconds in the pocket, he will make you pay. And he finds Heath Miller 30 yards for the touchdown. I imagine, Dick, that John Lynch is shaking his head. That is a bit too much time. You know, he is shaking his head. <laughs> I was doing exactly that, Patrick. Patrick. <laughs> Very perceptive. First down and a quarterback sneak. It was a first down, by the way. They were not short with it. And uh, Fitzpatrick with the quarterback sneak as if they needed a yard. I know I'm supposed to be the expert an analysis analyst, but I can't help you there. I have no idea what he's what he's doing but he did go to harvard maybe he's smarter than, than me what was he thinking up there <laughs> on the offense there john i don't know <laughs> they got two yards 
Second down and nine. The Wildcat, Brad Smith at the quarterback position right now. And there is Spiller who's going to have the ball and Spiller's going to turn the corner. And he did a good job getting around Jason Jones, the former Titan. And Spiller gets nine yards, so a little trickery for the Bills for the first time. In a motion Spiller two weeks ago versus Jacksonville. They kept it with Brad Smith a couple of times and used Spiller as a decoy. This time they give it to Spiller and just allow him to use that speed. Good blocking on the perimeter by Ruvel Martin. Spiller has carried the ball 11 times. He has a 20 or more carries only once this year, and that's been a bone of contention. Although Spiller has not complained about it, uh, everyone knows it's in the air. First and 10 at the 45 of Seattle, and Spiller picking up about four. And you see a guy with this much talent. Now, Fred Jackson, he's a fantastic all-around football player, so you get it trying to utilize both. I just think at some point you've got to make the decision. The C.J. Spiller, he could change. He's the type of player that, it, I keep saying it, but is a game changer. You've got to get him the ball. He's got to be your lead dog at least. And then Fred Jackson has a changeup. Jackson, of course, on injured reserve with a knee injury. So it's Spiller's game. Second down and six. Here is Spiller again looking for a yard. Gets a yard. Now to Chan Gailey's defense, one of the reasons possibly that C.J. Spiller doesn't play on a more regular basis. Watch this pass protection. He is not a good pass protector. And when you get your quarterback killed in this league, it doesn't matter how good you are. Coaches don't like playing you. You see C.J. Spiller, this is something he's going to have to improve upon. But he can because he's willing to do it. He just got to take it upon himself to become a better pass protector. But maybe one reason he's not in there. Fred Jackson, one of the better pass protectors in the NFL. Dan Gailey said he was the best. Third down and four. And here's Fitzpatrick getting hit from behind by Chris Clemens. And a loose ball picked up by the Seahawks. And running it. And to the five is Bruce Irvin. And he goes in. Flag. Not down, no flags are down. It is a touchdown. Bruce Irvin picking it up and taking it the rest of the way. Well, it's Chris Clemens. Fitzpatrick holds it a beat too long. He, Chris Clemens beats Cordy Glenn, the left tackle. Strips the ball. Cordy Glenn going to try to pick it up. Bruce Irvin gets the ball, and it looks like he's going to be down by contact. T.J. Graham hustles down. Yep. And he does touch Irvin when he's down on the ground. Should be their ball at the six-yard line. So no touchdown for the Seahawks. Ten-yard line. Seattle's ball, first and ten. It'll be first down for the Seahawks. There it is right there. T.J. Graham does touch him. Seahawks ball at the 10-yard line. So Chris Clemen picks up his second sack. So for the third straight year, double figures in sacks. He now has 11. But how about that Bruce Irvin, who they say keeps getting better and better, the number one draft pick out of West Virginia. He's a speed guy, and you compliment that beef that you have inside with Brandon Meebane and Red Bryant with guys like Chris Clemens. And Bruce Irvin, that's what I love about this defense. Whatever style you could, you want to play, they've got an answer for it because they can play the tough physical game. They can also play the fast speed game. Ten takeaways in the last two games. First and goal and play action. Wilson getting chased, takes no chances and throws it away. Pressure by Mario Williams. Talk about all those turnovers. This was last week in the dismantling of the Arizona Cardinals. Richard Sherman with the interception takes it to the house. Patrick Peterson has had trouble holding on to the football all year. Malcolm Smith takes it in for the touchdown. Today at halftime, Jen, Jen Hale said Pete Carroll wanted turnovers. Well, you ask and you shall receive. He's got two of them early in the second half. And we haven't seen 
that read option that much so far and he said he was going to uh, downplay that perhaps we'll see what happens here is Wilson on the play action looking for a receiver in the end zone and incomplete he had Michael Robinson the fullback way in the end but the pass was high and it'll be third and goal that's one he's going to want back because Michael Robinson wide open in the back of that end zone Russell Wilson again extending the plays looked like Ben Roethlisberger from that last break had all day to throw extends the play as he does so well but just an inaccurate throw here he was gotta, there yeah he certainly was you got to give that to your fullback because fullbacks love scoring touchdowns <laughs> third and goal from the 10 Full start, Seahawks. Full start, offense number 18, five-yard penalty. That's only the second penalty called against Seattle in the game. Dave Wanstead was dialing up the all-out blitz. They were bringing the pressure on Russell Wilson, and it was Breno Giacomini that got a little antsy there on the edge. Third down and goal. Ball now at the 15. Here's as if they're coming with the pressure again. Eight-man rush. Now they send seven, and this pass is going to be dropped. Incomplete, intended for Doug Baldwin, and he had Justin Rogers on his back, so that'll bring up fourth down and the field goal try. There's the pressure, and this is an excellent finish by Justin Rogers continues to play fight goes after the football that's good defensive back play by Justin Rogers so a good stop that time by the Bills after the sack fumble and here is Steven Hauschka who had an extra point blocked perfect from this distance this will be a 33 yard try and that adds to the Seahawk lead. It's now 40 to 17 in favor of Seattle, but they get points as a result of the sack, forced fumble by Clemens. Urban ran it close, and they get three out of it. Okay. Call Star Star NFL to download NFL Mobile for every NFL game this holiday season while on the go. Seahawks in their wolf gray uniforms for the first time on the road trying to go three and five away from the friendly confines in Seattle where they're undefeated in a line drive kickoff to Brad Smith and Brad Smith gets tripped up as he approaches the 25 well holiday season is approaching in a beautiful view there of the Christmas tree in downtown Toronto with that great blue background been some memorable moments here in the dome the Toronto Blue Jays two world championships division champions as well here is Fitzpatrick on first down getting time and going deep and reaching out with Stevie Johnson just let him a little bit too much with Sherman covering on the play Seattle Seahawks play with eight guys in the box more than anybody in this league and they basically dare you to throw the football deep well that's not a strength of the Buffalo Bills they try to go after it Stevie Johnson more of a possession receiver tries to execute a double move but then just doesn't have the all-out speed to go get that football they need a game breaker outside do the Buffalo Bills came into the game tied for the third fewest long pass plays of 20 or more only 33 second down and 10 so they go underneath completing it to the 30 is Brad Smith Bobby Wagner the middle linebacker good-looking rookie holds Smith to six yards with seven minutes to go in the third we showed you the, the banners depicting the Toronto Blue Jays well the Toronto Argonauts of the Canadian Football League captured the Grey Cup symbolic of the Canadian Football League championship this very year they are the Blue Jays with three AL East championships. They hosted an all-star game and two world championships as well. Third down and four. Ready. 
Coming in on Fitzpatrick. Good protection for Fitzpatrick. And the pass intercepted by Earl Thomas. Thomas picks it off. Inside the 30, inside the 20. Thomas has one man to beat, and what a run for the touchdown. Jason Jones started it all with the pressure on Fitzpatrick, and 57 yards, and of course they're going to have a review of this anyway, as they do, as John mentioned, on all turnovers and scores, but what a nifty run by Thomas after the pick. A careless throw by Ryan Fitzpatrick, and these Seattle defensive backs, these guys are ball hawks. You're going to throw the football up careless, and he's got Jones bearing down on guys like Earl Thomas. They're going to come up with the football. We'll see if he did catch it, but what a run. I mean, it looked like C.J. Spiller back there did Earl Thomas getting into the end zone. That's the life of an NFL quarterback. You got Jason Jones barreling down, but you got to be smart with the football. That would be his third interception of the season. Sherman has the only interception for a touchdown on this team, and of course we have to see whether it's confirmed. Sure looks like he got his hands under this one. Mm. The result will follow. We'll be back. Scott Green. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. So for Earl Thomas, his first career touchdown interception on this play. You see, it starts with Jason Jones up front. As I mentioned, a careless throw by Ryan Fitzpatrick, but just an outstanding run by Earl Thomas. Earl Thomas is one of the first moves that Pete Carroll and John Schneider, the GM, made as they came in to run this organization, picking him 14th in the draft. And that kind of run, unbelievable, shows the athleticism. Hauschka with the extra point. 57-yard run, and this is the largest two-game scoring differential since the 1941 Chicago Bears in two games had a scoring differential of a plus 95. Now the Seahawks in the last two have a plus 88. And of course, they missed an extra point, would have been 89, but we've got some time left in this one. 6.13 to go in the third. And you know, other than the 17 points, this is kind of a, John, a carbon copy to uh, last week's game for the Hawks against the Cardinals. It's total domination, and in this NFL these days where it's about who's playing the best football at the right time, the Seahawks, nobody's playing better than, and you, you might question the competition, you still gotta go play, and whoever's in front of them, they're taking them down. You see Earl Thomas, now one thing he can work on, Dick, he might have to work with Russell Wilson, because he tries to get that up in the ends, up to the fans, and not quite. He got rejected. <laughs> you know, I remember a guy tried to throw a ball over a hangar out in, near the San Francisco area and claimed that he threw a baseball over there, and then uh, everyone said there was no chance of that. It's our old friend, Coach John Madden. <laughs> I got brought into that conversation once and didn't give the answer Coach Madden wanted me to give. <laughs> and... They get out to the 20 yard line on the touch touchback 47 to 17 a 30 point lead by the Seahawks well join the NFL in celebrating 50 years of the Pro Football Hall of Fame in this golden anniversary come to Canton and join the more than 10 million fans who have made the pilgrimage to the birthplace of the National Football League visit ProFootballHOF.com for more details. Thurman Thomas, a Hall of Famer, during warm-ups, was there. Inductee in 2007. We've got a couple back in our studio. Howie Long and Terry Bradshaw, and I think a future one in Michael Strahan. And perhaps a future one in my partner, number 47, John Lynch, who reached the semifinals for this year. C.J. Spiller. And Spiller. Those four yards. Buffalo Bills were four and twelve two years ago, six and ten last year. 
and looking for the improvement this year in Chan Gailey's third season. And uh, they have been disappointing. And this was a game that a lot of people thought that even though the Seahawks were coming in, you know, had a chance to perhaps knock off a team that had been a little shaky on the road, especially with improved defense. They, they weren't up to the task today, to say the least. It's been a very disappointing effort. As you see C.J. Spiller get the screen pass. But a disappointing effort for the Buffalo Bills. This was a team that many people had high expectations for. They went out, spent some money on Mario Williams, the hottest free agent out there this year. Mario Williams has been good. The rest of the team hasn't. And they've been close up to this game the last couple of weeks, playing good defense. They haven't done it offensively. Today, the defense breaks down. The offense breaks down. Chan Gailey says, we just can't get over the hump. And today's not a good representation that they're close to being able to get over that hump. With Seattle just dominating them. Under five minutes to go in the third. Third down and five at the 25. Pass caught by Brad Smith for the first down. Picking up 10 yards. You know, I'm looking over at the Seattle quarterback story where Russell Wilson, what a great story. And Matt Flynn, who they paid a lot of money, Green Bay Packer. A lot of people say maybe he could be a franchise quarterback for somebody, but Wilson beat him out in camp. And with the clipboard on the side of the Buffalo Bills is Tavares Jackson, who began his career with the Vikings and then played with Seattle last year and started 14 games. So another good reason about Wilson's rise. First down and 10. And a drop by T.J. Graham. That's at least his third drop today. T.J. Graham. We said it from the beginning. Ryan Fitzpatrick said he's going to have to play big today. Somebody other than C.J. Spiller and Stevie Johnson, they were looking for him to be that guy. He just hadn't been able to catch the football. you got to catch the football to give yourself a chance. Second down and ten. This pass thrown behind Stevie Johnson. And, of course, the number one spotlight is always on the quarterback on every team, and it would be on the Bills as well. Yeah, with Ryan Fitzpatrick, you know, he put up some big numbers the last couple of years. This year he's been inconsistent and careless with the football. And when you throw too many interceptions, you're going to be having some heat on you. And I think these next couple of games are going to be really big for Ryan Fitzpatrick moving forward because this – organization had made a commitment to him but they're gonna have to make a decision all over again is this the guy we need to go forward and then who do you go get that's the that's the issue not a big quarterback class coming in you find a free agent but those questions are gonna be asked and this one nearly intercepted by Byron Maxwell you know timing is so important John when you talk about getting franchise quarterbacks just look at the Indianapolis Colts they have Peyton Manning all those years and they sit out a year, they have a losing season, they get the number one pick, and Andrew Luck falls in their lap, and it looks like they're going to have a million years with him now. Absolutely, and I'll tell you what, Andrew Luck, I watched him a long time at Stanford, never had a doubt that he would be successful, but the level of success that these quarterbacks have had this year, the wins, they've got their teams in playoff contention, fourth quarter comebacks, it's been simply a unbelievable watching this rookie class. Leon Washington from inside the 15 on the return. Leon Washington flag is down, though, back on the 15. And you know what that normally means. Washington will outrace everybody into the end zone. 82 yards, but the flag back down where he caught the ball. And there's two flags, so it, it looked to be pretty obvious, unfortunately, for Leon Washington. Usually that means a legal block in the back, which nullifies it all. I'd say about 99% of the time. There are two fouls on the play. During the return, number 41 of the receiving team, that penalty is declined. Also an illegal block in the back, number 36, that penalty be enforced after this to the goal. First down. So they declined the one on Byron Maxwell, except the one on Ron Parker. Same thing. 
nullifies the 82 yard punt return for the touchdown. Well we talked about these rookie quarterbacks and we're all amazed that you mentioned how they have done not only winning records but getting teams into the playoffs. Those other two Brandon Whedon and Brian Tannehill they're, they're right there on the outside looking in but the level of success of these guys and you look at Russell Wilson you talk about fourth quarter quarter comebacks he's done it against the New England Patriots the Chicago Bears the Green Bay Packers against good teams as well. Kirk Cousins of Michigan State started today for the Redskins and they wanted to give Robert Griffin the third an extra week and boy did it ever pay off with a 38 21 victory for the Redskins. This is Robert Turbin on the run brings it out to the 12 yard line picking up four yards and I like that by my old coach in Denver Mike Shanahan because you, you know you're in a playoff on it's real easy to say Robert you're, you're healthy we need you but instead he looked at the big picture and said you know what we drafted Kirk Cousins this kid can play as well we want to make sure we have Robert Griffin for the foreseeable near future and the long term future I think a smart decision to sit him and Kirk Cousins made it look like a real good decision he delivered against the Browns and now the Redskins would be a division winner if the season ended right now as Turbin carries for a game break let's check in with Kurt Menefee Kurt well, the Cowboys and Steelers each needing a win today against one another. Right now, it's Dallas on top. Tony Romo hooking up with Des Bryant. Busted finger and all. 24-yard touchdown. And Dallas has the lead 17-10 at home in the third quarter. Dick and John. Who would not be in the playoffs. So, this is a tremendous derby going on and it will go down to the end of the season for sure here is Wilson from inside his five buying time and he completes the pass to Zach Miller who caught a touchdown pass in the first half gets him out of a little trouble getting 14 yards and a first down you know, Dick in my study for this game it was fascinating fascinating watching Russell Wilson I think because of the fact that he's been 5'10 his entire life He's had to do it a little differently. He pumps, he buys time, then he escapes. But he always keeps his eyes downfield. He's got an unbelievable ability to throw the football accurately on the run. This kid's the total package. Doesn't look like the typical franchise quarterback, but my gosh, he is. Finish at Wisconsin, played at North Carolina State. Dave Wanstead played against him for two years. And another completion, shy of the first down to Golden Tate, getting nine yards. Dave Wanstead was the head coach of the University of Pittsburgh and faced Russell Wilson twice when Wilson was at NC State. You know, think about Russell Wilson, 5'11", they list him, really 5'10 and change. And you look at the height, Andrew Luck, 6'4", the number one pick. Russell Wilson, 5'11", you see the weight, but look at the hand of measurement right there. Ten and a quarter inches is Russell Wilson. Bigger hand than Andrew Luck, his arm's only an inch shorter. I mean, that's... He, he plays a lot bigger, and there's a reason why. Second down and one with a minute to go in the third. And play action for Wilson. And Wilson gets away, avoided the sack from Alex Carrington's attempt. And you see that. Chad Gailey said the only reason the Buffalo Bills head coach, he, he wasn't in the conversation for the number one pick was because he's 5'11". And he said everybody had a problem with it except him. And I would add John Schneider because John Schneider saw this kid at Wisconsin. And people from the Seahawks will tell you last year he said that's the guy. And what great foresight by John Schneider, the general manager. He sold Pete Carroll on him. And boy, is it paying dividends right now. And he loved the comeback win over the Bears in the crowded Soldier Field. Here is Turbin with the carry. And Williams makes the tackle. It'll be another first down for the Seahawks. And it may be the last play of the third quarter. And it's been a quarter in which the Seattle Seahawks have kept it all going from a impre very impressive first half. Pete Carroll talking about Russell Wilson. He said, back to USC, we had a profile for players that they, they got to be a first-round draft pick. And if they aren't, they better be a great player. And he said, Russell doesn't fit the profile, but you look at the film, he was a great player everywhere he was. And he's shown himself to be already in the National Football League. First down at the 38. And here is Wilson. And Wilson 
getting around Mario Williams and will get a first down and go out of bounds. What an exhibition by Russell Wilson and he started the game with two touchdowns on the first two possessions and has three touchdowns in the game. Buffalo three turnovers on three possessions 16 points. It is a 47 to 17 game. Fox NFL Sunday continues after a break from your local Fox station. Score by quarters and there is Richard Sherman who uh, can dance on the sidelines, dance on the field. Former Stanford man, partner. Former wide receiver at Stanford, converted to corner, and another great pick late in the rounds. Start of the fourth quarter, Russell Wilson, flag is down. Throws it away, and that time the pressure from Nick Barnett, the weak side linebacker for the Bills. Holding, offense, number 74. And there'll be a holding penalty against John Moffitt. Now, Dick, I didn't, I've seen the old NFL films of Fran Tarkington, and this is what it looked like to me. He's going to go one way. Uh, I think I'll go back this way and then turn around and go that way. Tarkington, Staubach, I mean, that's good stuff, and that's what Russell Wilson does. It's incredibly frustrating. You can imagine how those D linemen are getting tired chasing him and then he manages to protect the football which is the great thing to go along with that told us the other day that he watches a film of the old quarterback such as Fran Tarkenton first down at 20 at the 41 Leon Washington getting the carry here and Washington bulls his way out to the 46 early here in the fourth quarter Dick Stockton along with John Lynch and Jennifer Hale fifth straight year that the Buffalo Bills have played a home game here in Toronto. They lost the first three and then beat the Redskins 23 to nothing and then trying to derail the Seattle Seahawks. But it looks like the Seahawks are on a mission. There's no question about it. Headed for nine and five, a wild card. And if the 49ers were to stumble against New England later, it would be in a tie for first place. They may control their own destiny. Here's Wilson on the carry, falls down. And I think they would if they were tied with the game coming up next week. This is a team to be reckoned with. And again, I'll talk about the competition the last couple of weeks. People will say that, but you can see a team when it's clicking. This team is clicking. All three phases, they're executing. They're getting things done. Russell Wilson has this offense opening up and scoring points. The defense second in the league in points allowed. The special teams playing well. This team has it all. You know, I forgot about the tie that the Rams and 49ers played because right now the 49ers still would be a half a game in front of Seattle, but they play next week, and that would obviously break the tie. Pass caught by Golden Tate, so a stumble by the 49ers against New England, a victory by Seattle, and if Seattle were to win next week, they would get the mission accomplished in that division right now. I don't know if you'd call it a stumble against the Patriots no, the right. way they're playing right now. What they did, the Houston Texans, a good football team last week. That's another team clicking on all cylinders. So it's fourth down. Jarris Bird is going to go back for the first time. And John Ryan, he's a Canadian from Regina, Saskatchewan, in his fifth year from Western Canada. And now they're going to fake it and running up the middle. Yes, and running up the middle is Michael Robinson to the 10-yard line. 30-point lead in all, still early in this fourth quarter, and Pete Carroll with another gimmick, and on a punt formation, Michael Robinson gets 30 yards right here on the direct snap. Well, to Maragos, and then Maragos to Michael Robinson, and I'm not so sure I like that. Look, I defended Pete Carroll last week when they... People had questions about throwing the football against the Arizona Cardinals, and this is the NFL, but a fake punt up by 30 points. I'm not so sure I'm a big fan of that. Stuff like that can, can come back to bite you at a later date. First down, and the handoff to Turbin. And Mario Williams makes the play. No gain, maybe a yard. Well, it's always going to be a question in the sport of football of sportsmanship aspect, if you want to call that, or you can say, well, stop them if you can. But this isn't the same thing. You're putting out a gimmick play here. 
That's the thing. I think, yeah, I'm all for stop them. If you can't stop them, it's your problem. But fake punts, that's a different story, I believe. 13th play of the drive. Second down and 10 from the 14. Wilson's pass is caught by Sidney Rice. And Rice appears to have first down and goal for the Seahawks. Talk about this team moving forward. One guy that, that I just really believe is just completely critical is Sidney Rice. He provides that one-on-one -on -one threat outside. This is a team that hasn't had a receiver go over 100 yards in 22 straight, straight games, but Sidney Rice just a valuable asset to have. He wins one-on-ones. He's a threat across the middle. He's got to stay healthy. That's been his big nemesis throughout his career. First and goal from the four, and here is Wilson. Chased by two defenders way back past the 20, but he gets the pass to Turbin, and Turbin gets a lot of that back. It's going to be second and goal, and they place it at the six. Jarris Bird came over to make the play. They lost three. Here's Francis Tarkington going back. <laughs> Russell Wilson. It looks like he's just having fun out there, turning one way, but then the presence of mind to find your receiver and then throw an accurate pass. It's a little unconventional, but we've seen that before in this league. The kid gets it done. 92 yards rushing, but that only begins to tell a story because he's run a lot more, several miles in and out, getting away from defenders. And here's Turbin, and Turbin getting to the five. Wilson on the tackle. A little more than five minutes have gone by here in the fourth quarter. 47 to 17. And they scored 58 points last week in the win over Arizona, which was a franchise record for points scored. Going to be an enjoyable day for Mr. Carroll. Third and goal. Wilson's pass. And it's... Touchdown rule, Sidney Rice. Had to keep both feet in. Seemed like he had control after it. Let's see, he catches the football. Let's see that left foot down. Out of bounds. <laughs> the other foot never even no, came close no, to getting down. Nuh -uh. Left foot down. Nuh -uh. Not so fast. That one won't come back. Great catch by Sidney Rice. Problem is, he didn't have two feet in. And we're going to have a scoring review, and we know where this one is headed. We'll be back. Well, unfortunately, uh, not skating in the National Hockey League because of the lockout, so the kids can do the skating. Here's Scott Green. After reviewing the play, the receiver only got one foot down inbounds before his knee touched out of bounds. It's an incomplete pass. It'll be fourth down on the five-yard line. Well, Stephen Hauschka came onto the field long before Scott Green came out <laughs> from under the hood because the Seahawks knew full well. So Hauschka will attempt a 23-yard field goal. I would love to hear Scott Green say, after further review, it wasn't close. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to hear that once. Hauschka's field goal is good, and it is now... 50 to 17. The third time in history, 50 points in back-to-back -back games. 50 to 17, the Seahawks lead. These are Ryan Fitzpatrick's numbers. The 30-yard fake punt set up the field goal when the Seahawks failed to get the third down touchdown pass to Rice. Hauschka kicking off and Smith and Rogers both back in the end zone for the Bills. And it will be Brad Smith who will take it out at the 20. Well, on January 4th, one of the best bowl games of the year is on Fox as Heisman Trophy winner. And one of the most talked about players in the country, Johnny Manziel, leads ninth-ranked Texas A&M against the 11th-ranked Oklahoma Sooners. The AT&T Cotton Bowl Classic is January 4th, only on Fox. Now, did Hauschka suffer an injury there? 
grabbing onto his uh, right leg. Any event, the Bills will have it on the 20. 9.17 to go in the fourth. Hand off to C.J. Spiller. Spiller with a first down and more going out of bounds. Well, the Seahawks wearing their alternative uniforms. Wolf Gray. Wolf Gray. Jennifer Hale. Dick, it's only the second time in franchise history where they've worn a jersey color that's different than their original colors. They chose the gray to reflect the mountains of Seattle. And boy, have sales been great. Team sources tell me it has been so popular with Seattle fans. Everybody's wanted to have one. You know, Jennifer, I think that uh, they also told the people that they score 50 points <laughs> in a game when they wear the wolf gray. <laughs> First down at the 36. Fitzpatrick drills it, and it's caught by Stevie Johnson. You see the last play. C.J. Spiller goes out of bounds. I thought they were fighting, but Marshawn Lynch, he's a fun-loving guy, just having some fun with C.J. Spiller. Well, maybe that was another version of the Gangnam style that we saw from Cy earlier in the game. And we have a... Stoppage of play as somebody has uh, run on the field and being escorted off. A lot of important early games in the NFL. While well, we have a couple of moments that we want to tell you about and uh, some of the top performers of these games. Redskins with Kirk Cousins, the quarterback, beat the Browns. Broncos over the Ravens. How about Adrian Peterson? 294 yards to go to break Eric Dickerson's record. Incredible. Here's Spiller. And he has the first down. And you know, everyone's talking about Adrian Peterson and what he's done and, and Peyton Manning. And I think that Adrian Peterson should be the comeback player of the year. I know a lot of consideration would be to Peyton. I think Peyton is driving for MVP. Yeah, I think you're right. I think they're both driving for MVP. I mean, they both have an outstanding season. See Peyton Manning right there. I mean, these guys coming off surgeries playing like this, simply mind-boggling. Adrian Peterson, it was less than a year ago that he's came off ACL surgery, goes for 212 again, outstanding season. Peyton Manning making it look easy like he's always done, but just incredible seasons. And the pass caught by Chandler. By the way, Cousins is the seventh rookie quarterback to win a start this year. Now you look at the MVP candidates. Uh, take your pick. You know, and the other night, I think, brought up for a lot of people, we kind of forget about Tom Brady because he's so darn consistent. We just expect him to be good. I think the stories are so great with these other guys, but Tom Brady, you got to hand it to him. He continues to put out great efforts, an exceptional football player, an exceptional competitor. He may be the lead dog in the, in the hunt right now. Patriots and Brady take on the 49ers tonight. Second down and six. Hand off is to, to Shard Choice. He will have a first down getting to the 41 of the Seahawks getting seven yards on the play and I will not say again 49ers they stumble against the Patriots <laughs> not against that Patriot team that'll be a tough road game for them absolutely that's gonna be a great football game two teams who have played at a high level throughout the course of the season and the Patriots much like the Seahawks it's just everything's working right for them right now first and ten at the 41 by Graham he hasn't been able to hold on to much today but he has that for another first down to the 27 yard line picking up 15 Giants shut out today Falcons beat him 34 nothing first time the Giants have been blank since 1996 significant win for the Falcons because people <clears throat> were starting to doubt the Atlanta Falcons <laughs> But the Atlanta Falcons, all they've done is win all year. And when people start questioning them, they seem to respond like this. Going to be interesting. Everybody wants to see it in the playoffs, but they certainly made a statement today. Need a throat loss? 
Seven and zero at home after they win over the Giants today. Here is Fitzpatrick batted down at the line by Greg Scruggs, who was picked on the seventh round out of Louisville. Going to the Sugar Bowl. 5.25 to go in the game. It's 50 to 17. Seahawks came out strong. Russell Wilson running for touchdowns on the first two possessions for Seattle. Ended up with three rushing touchdowns. First quarterback in Seahawk history to do that. Fitzpatrick and this pass incomplete and it was Stevie Johnson defended well by Byron Maxwell. Byron Maxwell, another corner that you see with that long wingspan that John Schneider, the general manager, Gus Bradley, the defensive coordinator, and Pete Carroll go after. They want guys that are long. And I remember Phil Jackson back in the day talking about he, he likes long defenders that get in the way of passing lanes, and that's what this defense has with the likes of Cam Chancellor, Richard Sherman, Brandon Browner. Incredible length in their back end that provides for great ball hops. Can it beat wingspan, huh? Mm -mm. When you're going up for a ball. Third down and 10. And we will have a timeout called by the Bills. Rough day for Chan Gailey and his staff and his players and his fans. Back here in Toronto, after the timeout called by the Bills, it'll be third down and 10 at the 26 of Seattle. And we'll have a false start, false start called against Buffalo, and it'll be the left tackle, Cordy Glenn. Cordy Glenn having a tough time with his fellow Georgia alum Chris Clemens today and that will get you to get out of that stance a little early Cordy Glenn a rookie left tackle second round pick from Georgia third down and 15 if five receivers lined up in the empty Fitzpatrick won't get away and it's going to be Chris Clemens. Jason Jones and Chris Clemens combined for that sack. And fourth down coming up, and the offense remains on the field. See Chris Clemens, a force to be reckoned with on the outside. And really, Jason Jones gets the sack. But credit that to Chris Clemens, who already has two today. A forced fumble, having another outstanding season. Guy's an edge rusher amongst the best in the league. So they're going to go on fourth and 21. No choice here. Fitzpatrick needs someone downfield, and this one is dropped by Rubel Martin. So the Seahawks will take over on downs with 4.37 remaining in a 50 to 17 route for Seattle. Well, Fox tomorrow from the creators of How to Train Your Dragon comes the broadcast premiere, Dragon's Gift of the Night Fury. Then the original cast of Ice Age is back for a mammoth Christmas. Don't miss the holiday fun tomorrow on Fox. From the 37 first down, new quarterback in the game for the Seahawks. But the same old story, Robert Turbin running for the first down. Matt Flynn seeing his second action of the season. Joined the Seahawks after four years with the Green Bay Packers. Had six touchdown passes in a win over Detroit. And, of course, that put him on the map, John. And this is invaluable. Last week, Russell Wilson played so well. Matt Flynn got a chance to come in. And you never know, moving forward in the playoffs, how that might come in handy. you got to play these guys. you got to get them reps. Matt Flynn and many other backups had an opportunity to play last week and this week could prove invaluable for the Seattle Seahawks. And Flynn handing off to Turbin and picks up a yard. For a game break, here's Kurt Menefee. Cowboys and Steelers and Pittsburgh takes its first lead of the game. Ben Roethlisberger, seven yards to Antonio Brown. 24-17, must win game for both teams early on in the fourth quarter. Dick and John. Pittsburgh could climb within a game of the Baltimore Ravens who lost to Denver today. And, of course, the Cowboys would really be on the outside looking in in uh, the very 
heavy playoff battle for wild card and divisions. Second down and nine. In fact, a Cowboy win would really put the NFC East in a jumble with the Redskins and the Giants. Then we go to go to tiebreakers with three teams. Second and nine. And off to Turbin. And Turbin over 100 yards last week gets to the 45. Russell Wilson. It was outstanding today. Did it with his legs a little more so than usual. The read option presenting problems. Drop back pass. Nothing's downfield. That's all right. I'll go run in for a second touchdown. Then let's go back to the read option. Go get my third rushing touchdown of the day. Went ahead and threw one as well. Russell Wilson was outstanding. Then he's going to stay in that game. Go get the headset and watch his buddy Matt Flynn go play a little quarterback for the Seahawks. 14 for 23, 204 yards. Flynn is in there now. And Turbin is put down at the 44, three yards shy of a first down. Approaching the two-minute warning. And uh, since week eight, the, the New England Patriots, the highest scoring team in the league, averaging 43 a game. Seattle second at 33 points a game. I tell you what, you start looking at all the reasons they could be successful. That's certainly one of them come playoff time. Two-minute warning. Two minutes remain in the game, and John Ryan will be punting for the Seahawks. Justin Rogers, fair catch on the eight-yard line. One fifty-two to go. This is the fourth time that the Bills have given up 45 or more points this year. Last team to do that with the Jets of 1986. So it was a, a pretty good run of five games defensively for this team. And then the, the explosion. And when we went to the, the break the last time as a new quarterback comes in for Buffalo is the fact that you think the way their offense has been lately could make them really dangerous in postseason. Well, you look at a deep or an offense that's scoring that many points with a defense that's given up about 15 and a half points per game. That's a great equation. You got a game breaking returner. Those are the type of things in a quarterback playing at a high level that leads to playoff success. They got to get there. Then they could do some definite damage. Tyler Thigpen is the new quarterback. That is a reception down by contact. And a first down, and there's an injured player on the field. The shard choice coming off the field was shaken up. Who caught he caught the ball. So Thick Pen, second year with the Bills, made 11 starts with 18 touchdown passes when he played for Chan Gailey with Kansas City back in 2008. First down at the 20-yard line, handoff to C.J. Spiller. Isn't it amazing that C.J. Spiller, who has had 20 or more carries only once this year, comes into this game and really is going to be the key offensive force for this team. That was his 17th carry. The team fell back early. They still went to him, but not to get to 2021. Yeah, and that was the problem. They, they got a big deficit early on, but you see the damage he can do. Another game with over six yards per carry. Went to 1,000 yards and did it with the second less, least carries in the history of the, the game. Back to Beatty Feathers in 1934. Second down and four. T.J. Graham gets the first down and goes out of bounds. Under a half a minute to go. Never thought you'd say Beatty Feathers. I bet you when we got ready for this game, did you ever think you'd say that name? Or did I? <laughs> Gets to 1,000 on the fewest carries, and that's what uh, C.J. Spillers was able to do. 108 points in consecutive games. Ties the third most in NFL history by the Seahawks. Only ones higher with the Rams of 1950 with 135 yards. Elroy Crazy Lakes Hirsch, Bob Waterfield, Tom Fears, exciting team. They were the greatest show on real, real grass before the greatest <laughs> show on turf under Mike Martz. 24 seconds to go, so the Wolf Gray, they wear well today for the Seahawks. Huh? Yeah, I don't think it matters what uniform they're wearing. 
these days. They're just playing great football. Pete Carroll's got this team primed, playing well in all phases. It's going to be fun to watch the Seahawks as they finish up this season and move on into the postseason. Second down and 10. Thigpen's pass. And he overthrows Doran Dickerson. So that'll be third down and 10. San Francisco 9 3 and 1. They play at New England and now the Seahawks will be 9 and 5 and the Bills continue that longest active drought not getting into the playoffs. 1999 was the last time they got into postseason. They went to the Super Bowl four times and they under sure Marv Levy. Third down and 10. Martin with the catch and does not get out of bounds and the clock will tick down that should do it and Pete Carroll's Seattle Seahawks have now won five out of six as they win big 50 to 17 over the Bills go to nine and five and the Bills drop to five and nine we'll be back for more postgame coverage after this break.